A very good evening and welcome to World Economic Review. The English News Department brings you the top financial news developments from around the globe, influencing financial markets, international currencies, commodities, as well as global commerce. In today's episode, we will shed light on an important local institution, the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development, known as KFIT, which is the first institution in the Middle East to take an active role in international development efforts. The Kuwait Fund serves uh, several objectives, most importantly, extending loans to, uh, on concessionary terms to finance development projects in developing countries. To help us delve into the types of past and ongoing contributions, whether to entities or nations, and how such contributions have impacted the recipients as well as our own community economically, we are happy to welcome to our program the distinguished guest this evening, the Director General of the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development, Mr. Abdul Wahab al Thank you. Thank welcome you for, for hosting me. You're most welcome. Welcome to World Economic Review. It's very nice to have you with us. Uh, this is a very important local institution. Uh, uh, actually, we will get back uh, to our special guest shortly. But first, let us take a look at a couple of local reports. Stay tuned. In our first report this evening, in a two-day GCC commercial cooperation meeting, the Minister of Commerce and Industry, Khaled al has highlighted customs procedures among the GCC, calling for creating a new approach that advances economic development in the region. Stay tuned for the full report. Kuwait's Minister of Commerce and Industry, Khaled al called on Monday, May 22nd, for facilitating customs procedures and movement of goods among the six Gulf Cooperation Council countries. The minister said that two-day meeting aimed at boosting private sector's role in sustainable development. The official who arrived in Manama on Sunday said that they have discussed how to facilitate movement of trucks via crossings as well as the billing of goods at seaports. In a speech to open the 55th meeting of the GCC Commercial Cooperation Committee, Bahraini Minister of Commerce and Industry Zaid Zayani said that commercial trade within the GCC has made tangible progress. Addressing the meeting, Zayani said that the private sector was playing an important role in economic development. Abdurrahman Latishan, the first vice president of the GCC Union of Chambers of Commerce and Industry, called for developing economic partnership between the public and private sectors. The Kuwaiti Ministry of Commerce and Industry's Assistant Undersecretary for International Affairs and Foreign Commerce, Nimr Sabah, said that the meeting tackled a comprehensive agenda. They mainly discussed issues such as consumer protection and patent transfers in the GCC member states. Meanwhile, Director General of Kuwait's Public Authority for Industry, or the PAI, Abdul Karim Taqi, said that a meeting of GCC Under Secretaries of Commerce and Industry yielded plans for a joint Gulf industrial strategy. Also within the local arena, we will take a look at the performance of the Kuwait Stock Exchange after the close of the trading session on Thursday, May 25th. We will also have a look at the Central Bank of Kuwait's currency report. Stay tuned. Borsa Kuwait ended Thursday's trading in the red zone as the price index was down 15.12 points to stand at 6,687.53 points. The weighted index was also down 0.31 points to read 402.21 points. And the KSX 15 index shed 1.46 points, reaching 914.82 points. Value of trade was at 10 million KD, while the volume was 102 million shares done through 2,134 deals. 
The top gainer of the day was Automated Systems Company, standing at 19.8 points, while Um Al Qawain General Investments Corporation suffered the biggest loss. Meanwhile, the Central Bank of Kuwait reported that the US dollar on Thursday settled at 303 fells, while the euro went up to 340 fells as compared to Wednesday's rates. The bank added in its daily online bulletin that the sterling pound settled at 393 fells, the Swiss franc was up 311 fells, while the Japanese yen remained at 2 fells. Welcome back to the program, and uh, we are happy to have our distinguished guest this evening, uh, Mr. Abdulhab al Badr, the Director General of the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development. Uh, Mr. Al Badr, you've been at the helm since 19, uh, let's say, on 2006 or 2005. 2005 yes. Can you give us uh, a, a history of your background at the fund? Well, uh, I've always been. With Kuwait Fund after graduation uh, from the United States. I joined Kuwait Fund as an economist. Uh, then uh, I became uh, part of Af uh, the Africa uh, Division. Uh, division, uh, And my most of my uh, traveling and work was in Africa. Uh, then I became the director of operation, uh, head of the division itself, uh, the African uh, West Africa Division, then director of operation, uh, then the deputy director for operation uh, until 2005 when I moved to be uh, the director general of the Kuwait Fund. Mr. Al-Badr, uh, the Kuwait Fund uh, was established back in 1961. It was the first organization in the Middle East that took an active role in international development efforts. How did the idea of creating uh, the fund develop and what is the history behind the beginnings of this institution and its expansion over the years? Well, the idea of aid was never absent or unknown in Kuwait. It has always been there. Uh, there. As a matter of fact, Kuwaitis, as uh, merchants and traders, uh, going around and uh, working within their own needs on, uh, in philanthropy work uh, as a whole. But it was organized uh, within Kuwait uh, 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 with the establishment in the, in the mid 50s of the Gulf Authority for the South. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gulf Authority for the South was the sole purpose of, of giving grants and for social aid, uh, health and education uh, in. Uh, countries uh, like Bahrain, uh, Dubai, uh, Sharjah then, Sharjah then and, and of course Oman and then moved into Yemen in the early 60s of course and, and started working in some countries like Djibouti and the south of Sudan then before it became south of Sudan as a country but as a part of Sudan. Now uh, this is uh, was was uh, as I said started in the 50s, but in after uh, after uh, uh, Kuwait independence in 61, mm -hmm. and it was in June uh, 61. Uh, one of the first uh, laws that ha was uh, uh, the government uh, produced was establishing of the Kuwait Fund simply because I think. The government then, the, the leadership then, believed that aid uh, has to be part of the work of this of Kuwait. Kuwait has to work with neighboring countries, uh, working with neighboring countries, especially in providing them with assistance. Kuwait was was blessed with uh, blessed with uh, uh, with uh, a wealth that. Uh, wanted to share it with uh, with uh, neighboring brotherly countries uh, in the region, and hence that's why the establishment of the Kuwait Fund, and was, that's why the name of the Kuwait Fund was Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development. Now, uh, the name may be confusing to some. I know, yes, because certainly. it says e Arab Economic Development, uh -huh. but uh, your uh, loans reach out to now more than 
106 it, countries around the world. It, it, it is true. It is true. Kuwait Fund started uh, working with Arab countries, so the name wa became synonymous with mm -hmm. our work. Uh, with our work, uh, so by, by in 1974, when when the law was changed to cover non-Arab countries, mm -hmm. uh, the leadership thought then that it will keep the name as it is just to confirm that our commitment is to the Arab world mm -hmm. before anybody else. And that's why um, t until now, not less than 50% of our assistance goes to Arab countries. Mm -hmm. Well, there are other nations such as, uh, let's say, uh, from my experience at uh, the Kuwait, uh, uh, at the Expo of, uh, uh, in Milan, mm -hmm. uh, you, you also reach out to China, uh, Italy, it's well 106 it's countries, so <laughs> e Western, we reach up to China and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and some of the Pacific country, uh, mm -hmm. countries, small Pacific countries. To the West, we go to, Argenti uh, to Argentina and uh, in Latin America mm -hmm. and countries. Our main aim, sometimes uh, countries in the service, they are uh, 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 big rich countries, but uh, som sometimes within and so there is some communities needed to be uh, to be uh, help, assisted assist and helped mm -hmm. uh, in in in, in uh, china for example most of our uh, well we started with this with the starting with china in the in the early 80s when china was just starting uh, to go outside to uh, to, co to contact the world so we were as a matter of fact we are the first uh, aid donor to uh, to china uh, to china before the world bank and before certainly any bilateral Aid uh, institution in the world, uh, and that's what we continue. Uh, so, uh, in the late, in the late uh, last maybe decade or two, most uh, our assistant and with the standing of the Chinese has went to some area with areas with Muslim uh, Muslim uh, majority, mm -hmm. uh, with the aim of uh, uh, trying to uplift their economic uh, uh, development. development. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Al-Badr, how, this is maybe a, a slightly detailed question, uh, how do you assess and decide on the loans, the con concessionary loans? Maybe you can describe to us yeah, also what, well what it means by concessionary. Uh, before we go uh, on to those terms and how concessionary means and what it is, uh, our loans, our type of project we select is is not a wish of ours as much as uh, a wish of the recipient country itself. Mm -hmm. We ask the country to provide us with their, first of all, pri a priority project that has a ready and completed uh, the technical and economic st study available for that. Uh, I, I don't want to enforce my will with a specific project uh, mm -hmm. to them because they know their requirements and need right. much better than I do. So we terms. I, at the same time, whatever I give is, is cannot uh, <coughs> fulfill most of those countries requiring because I work at this field with other institutions, uh, and each of those institutions take different projects, different projects. So uh, it is at the end a selection of, of that on 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 concessionality of, of a loan. Concessionality of loan is. Uh, is the, the the percentage of of, 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 of uh, sorry the, the terms and conditions of the loan mm -hmm. uh, compared to uh, what's available in the market? The market right. uh, it's concessional. Uh, that means it's it's better in terms, long, longer in maturity, mm -hmm. less in interest, and that is nearly uh, re really calculated uh, always uh, when we go to a country for a specific project. Then. Uh, a lot of elements to, is taken before we decided on the final uh, uh, terms. That's why they're called soft loans. It is soft loans, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, they tackle mostly infrastructure projects, right? To help the country develop. Oh, well, mainly we started with infrastructure uh, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. But uh, at the start of the 2000s, we have included to that you see, our name is Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic, mm -hmm. so uh, and uh, so that's why we tend to go for infrastructure because effective economic uh, uh, development of the country itself. But uh, at lately on since 2000, uh, our board has approved going into the social sector, of course, especially especially that 
even in the international community, they consider those some of the social sectors such as health and education is has uh, built in economic return to the country itself. Mm -hmm. So we, we do, uh, that's, that's maybe uh, one of the things that we included on the, the last 17 or 15 years ago uh, to our work, which is in the social sector, health and education. And as a matter of fact, those two sectors have been giving a, given a priority. And, and when I give a priority, uh, it's not that I force it to a country, but I, I normally give it a softer uh, ter terms that uh, just to attract the, uh, the country, uh, the receiving country to take it. Uh, with that said, how do you uh, follow up on uh, payment, uh, repayment? Uh, how do you enforce repayment? Have you had difficulties or with well, some of the nations? You, you, you work with the poorest country in the world, so you expect mm -hmm. difficulties. But if you, if you look at it, uh, payment is, 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 is doing fine. Arir is, is very minimal com mm -hmm. compared to the percentage of loan we have given uh, over the past, uh, now 54 years. Mm -hmm. 54 years, Kuwait Fund has already given 900, about 30 uh, loans. Mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, mm -hmm. to as much uh, uh, projects uh, and to our 160 countries, as you have mentioned earlier. But the percentage of area is very, is very low, and sometimes it all comes because of delays uh, and difficulties, but they turn on by being. We follow that. As a matter of fact, uh, we have a firm uh, requirement by the Kuwait Fund. Whenever there is a payment, we have to suspend uh, our release of uh, funds to that, mm -hmm. to, the, to that country. Oh, so they are, the, of course. the funds are divided. Yes, of course, and of course decided with, uh, discussed with mm -hmm. other uh, development aid institutions. Total loan so far, almost $20 billion? Almost, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's about 5,800 million Kuwaiti dinar, so it's, uh, it's around uh, 20 it's million. Number. Yeah, about 20 billion. Uh, Mr. Al-Badr, what is the work being done at the fund uh, in terms of South-South cooperation? We're talking about, I believe, Africa, South America. Well, yeah, the terms of South-South uh, cooperation have started in the, in the 70s. Uh, in the 70s, uh, it was not that a uh, term that is, is, is known. But we always uh, say that we have the pride that we have started the South-South cooperation. Uh, uh, well, it, 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 a lot of people think South means uh, Southern Hemisphere. It's the reality is not Southern, Southern, southern Hemisphere. It's Southern of the developed world. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, helping countries uh, from uh, regions, uh, from countries from the South, so South-South cooperation. Kuwait Fund has started that in the early uh, 60s. Mm -hmm. So well bef before the term has became uh, started so I, I always think that we are part of establishing that uh, that term uh, as a Kuwait once and and we are still doing so most of our aid assistance is to countries on the uh, on the south we have some in the north but uh, mm -hmm. uh, most of our aid assistance in the south actually I was reading a little bit uh, yesterday uh, about south south cooperation and funding uh, uh, development projects uh, the United Nations Security Council speaks very highly of the Kuwait Fund. Uh, uh, there is, uh, let's say, very positive remarks on what the Kuwait Fund has done over the years, and this is just to commend your, the, the work Th of the thank Fund. You, thank, thank you, thank you. Alhamdulillah, Kuwait Fund over the years have uh, acquired uh, the, the reputation, uh, not only as an aid giver, because aid, aid, give, aid giving is, is, is all only I went, I went I went bar to it mm -hmm. because uh, and there is others who also do that uh, do that but I, I think over the years we have you are uh, more of an initiator yes. it's that well in, in, not only initiating some of the project as much as also had the trust of the recipient countries in mm -hmm. Africa especially in Africa uh, Africa uh, whereby uh, they look for us as a uh, uh, let's call it uh, even a leader to any uh, mm -hmm. project co-financing uh, because they trust our work, they have worked with us uh, in many projects, and they, we have we have been successful in a lot of those projects. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked a little bit about some of the projects. Uh, you focus mainly on infrastructure to help the country build itself. Mm -hmm. We're talking about <coughs> uh, uh, areas such as agriculture and irrigation, uh, transportation, communication, energy, industry, water and sewage, 
Can you please elaborate on this? I mean, we're talking about highways, bridges. Yeah, th those are all within the framework of infrastructure. All the projects you are mentioning are within the framework of infrastructure. And that's mostly what is required for country to, uh, any country uh, uh, to, to base itself for future development. Mm -hmm. So it is like a prerequisite, let me put it, for any work they want to do for the future. Uh, and that's why most of our work were, were on those fields go, we, goes on. This is depending to the region. So you notice that in some regions we, are, we have more percentage in roads and highways, uh, while mm -hmm. in others in irrigation. It, it depends on, on, the, on, on the countries and the region and the region requirements. For example, Africa has a majority of roads. They want roads because mm -hmm. Communication between countries uh, and areas are, is very difficult and uh, those uh, projects will be needed for any development uh, thrust uh, in their country. And that's uh, something that we oblige to and, 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 and work on. Some other countries have like uh, water and uh, water resources, but it annualized in a, in a good manner. So you go for, you go for hydro, for dams, for uh, uh, project of that sort, of course, irrigation and uh, an agriculture area, and uh, or uh, or uh, uh, sewage <coughs> for some cities that need to be, <coughs> especially old cities uh, that uh, they need to uh, rebuild their system because of the ex explosion of population on that and on those cities. So we we tend to discuss and work on that, but at the end, it, as I said. You'll notice that it differs from one region to the other, mm -hmm. uh, from one country to the other. So you cannot specify it. But lately, as I said, uh, health and education, uh, sorry, health and education, yes. Uh, ah, I was started, just going to mention. Yeah, just started, to, started to become when we, uh, on our board, agreed to mm -hmm. that in 2000 to start it. Uh, we did. It took us a while, about the first three, four years, to convince uh, recipient countries. But one of the main uh, uh, then discussion, of course, and we main attraction attra attraction to the to recipient countries. We had them with uh, longer maturity, so we gave better grant element to those uh, projects. We will be back with our discussion on the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development after this short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to World Economic Review. Before we return to our guest this evening, we have this special report on the deteriorating situation in the Gaza Strip. The tumultuous situation there has been ongoing for more than 10 years. The Gaza Strip has seen appalling and unrelenting humanitarian crises, which have led to poverty and unemployment. Gaza Strip's economy is on the verge of collapse affected by the fighting that seems to never stop with the agriculture, construction, manufacturing, and electricity sectors being impacted the most. The latest reports indicate that more than 43% of Gaza's 1.8 million residents are unemployed, a figure that is arguably the highest in the world, and youth unemployment has reached about 60% by the end of last year. Our correspondent from Gaza, Hind al Khodari, has more in this report. Seven years on since Mahmoud Abbas and Benjamin Netanyahu last held talks, the same issue remains. Disagreement over borders, security, Jerusalem, and a right of return for refugees and mutual recognition are no closer to being solved. So many U.S. presidents who believe that it is their duty to bring peace to the region Whereas, Trump accepted the challenge of solving the Palestinian-Israeli conflict called the Ultimate Deal. Trump. 
U.S. President Donald Trump has arrived in occupied Palestine where he visited Jerusalem and Bethlehem to seek ways to restart talks between the Palestinian Authority and the Israeli government. The Secretary of State Rex Tillerson stated that President Donald Trump is putting a lot of pressure on Israel and the Palestinians to restart peace talks. <laughs> President Trump stressed the importance of creating an environment consistent with the desire of peace. Whereas Abbas went into the nuts and bolts referring to East Jerusalem as occupied territory and insisting on a return to the 1967 borders as a condition for a deal. He also insisted he wants the world to recognize Palestine as its own country with its capital in East Jerusalem. Seven years of endless negotiations between Palestine and Israel with no result. Will the visit of Trump change anything? For KTV2, this is Hind al Khudari, Gaza, Palestine. Now back to our special guest this evening, Mr. Abdul Wahab Al Badr, the Director General of KFAID, in continuing our discussion. The Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development and the Republic of Guinea have signed a 27 million US dollar loan agreement on Tuesday, May 23rd, to assist the Republic of Guinea in financing a road project to help promote trade movement. Let's take Let's take, us, let's take first a look at this uh, detailed report, and then we'll be back with our guest this evening, Mr. Abdul Hafid Bet. Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development, or the KFAED, and the Republic of Guinea signed a 27 million US dollar loan agreement on Tuesday, May 23rd. The 8 million Kuwaiti dinar loan, or the 27.2 million US dollar, was signed to help Guinea in financing road project. KFAED said in a statement that the project aims to meet the growing demand for the transportation of goods and passengers among its cities in the southeastern area across Guinea and promote trade movement with neighboring countries and to support social and economic development of the area. The deal was linked in the city of Ahmedabad in India on the sidelines of the annual meeting of the African Development Bank. It was signed by Guinea's Minister of Planning, Kenny Diallo, and KFAED's Deputy Director General, Hisham Lukien. The fund had provided 12 loans worth 48,577 million KD to Guinea to finance different projects. It also offered four technical aid worth 667,000 KD and allocated 3.961 million US dollar to the country for other projects. Well, we just uh, took a look at uh, the Guinea report. Uh, maybe you can, uh, it's the latest uh, of uh, the loans that have been signed by Kuwait, uh, May 23rd, I believe, uh, yes. uh, just a yes. week ago. Yes, certainly, uh, of course. Uh, Guinea, uh, Guinea Bissau is uh, one of the countries that, uh, this loan with the Guinea Bissau will be the first of our loans to Guinea Bissau. As a matter of fact, it's just a newcomer to our portfolio. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the same time, it's part of our uh, of Kuwait commitment, the Kuwait that His Highness the Emir made during the African uh, mm -hmm. Arab Summit, whereby he pledged uh, one billion uh, US dollar uh, aid to Africa uh, for five years. Uh, Kuwait Fund has been fulfilling that uh, pledge, and uh, this loan, as a matter of fact, is part of the last year of that uh, of the pledge, and we are hoping by the end of or current uh, uh, physical year will uh, will be finishing with the, the commitment that His Highness uh, Amir during uh, the summit. Uh, of course, the signature was uh, so happened to be in, not in Africa; it, it is in Hyderabad. 
Hyderabad is hosting the African Development Bank meeting and we uh, wanted to utilize that, ev uh, that uh, occasion also an event to, to, to sign a number of, 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 of uh, loans. So our deputy director, my deputy, is there right now <laughs> and I've just finished uh, signing some, some uh, of the project, project approved by the, uh, the board of directors. Uh, Mr. al -Badr, in light of helping other countries or entities, uh, the fund takes into account the needs for a reasonable degree of concessionality in its loans, uh, reflected in the significant magnitude of the element of grant in the fund's loans. The level of the element of grant is determined in light of economic conditions of the recipient country and the, partic and the particular circumstances of each project. I guess there is a differentiation yes, between yes. grant and loan. Can you please? Uh, yeah, it, it is what they call a grant element. Is just just to give an example, what's a grant element? Is a grant element is per percentage of a grant considered in a loan at the end of the repayment of the loan. Mm -hmm. uh, let's assume I give a loan right now with uh, for a twenty million uh, U.S. dollar, for example, and 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 give uh, terms, uh, 20 years term at uh, five years grace, for example, and uh, at the same time I give it for 2%. Uh, that, those numbers are re all calculated together to give what is the value of, of what is the payment will be in, 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 uh, in, uh, in 20 years compared to the market, market rate. And that difference is your grant element, is what considered as a grant uh, element that is given to the, to the, to the recipient countries. Uh, it is a method of calculation that we use and, uh, to, 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 to put uh, the term of the project, take into consideration country, economic, uh, and of course, bro uh, project. Uh, we as a, as a ma uh, the management has submitted to our board of directors for, uh, and took approval when we, we discuss our five year plan uh, what percentage of grant element any type of country economic uh, least developed, middle income, uh, high income, uh, middle high and, and high income, what, what's their grant element at the same time uh, uh, that even within the first, uh, with the same uh, element specification, uh, this development, even change uh, difference between uh, health sector, uh, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. and of course, and water and water resources, and road and electricity. For, for, for electricity project, for example, you know, electricity has a direct return Absolutely. in terms of paying, mm -hmm. paying whatever you sell as electricity profits. later on. Profits, profits yeah. compared to a road, or compared to a sewage mm -hmm. project, or to compared to education and, and, and health. So we, we tend to give uh, lower grant element to those uh, mm -hmm. uh, type of laws compared mm -hmm. to a higher grant element in, 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 in other uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, laws. Uh, this that goes with the countries, of course. Understood. So you're talking about joining forces with other agencies to... With, with, with other countries and agencies in mm -hmm. the region, if it's a re regional, so it's a, it's a regional participation, so most of them are Arab uh, financing, and of course, uh, mm -hmm. and those are, uh, uh, every country of, of the Arab world is a member and is a beta participant, of course, uh, the but the percentage of, 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 of participation differs from one country to the other. We will be back with our discussion with uh, Mr. Abdul Wahab Al Badr, the Director General of the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development, after this short break. In our next report, business leaders gathered in the U.S. state of South Carolina to learn more about how to keep their companies safe from cyber threats. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce has held a day-long cybersecurity summit at the University of South Carolina Alumni Center in Columbia. The gathering aimed at helping businesses evaluate how they are doing in terms of cybersecurity and develop new economic strategies. The full report is coming up next.
Business leaders gathered in South Carolina to learn more about how to keep their company safe from cyber threats. The event is in partnership with the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce and University of South Carolina's SC Cyber. Featured attendees included U.S. Representative Mike Rogers, former chairman of the Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, and Eric Lee Goldstein, a cyber security official with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. They discussed recent threats like the WannaFree ransomware that hit computers worldwide. It infected computers and demanded owners pay a ransom to get rid of it or they would lose all their data. Jacob Cook, VP of Business Development for Sun Solutions in Colombia, confirmed that they learned how that could have been prevented. Besides keeping their hardware and software up to date, business also hailed the importance of making sure their employees are well trained, especially on emails, to avoid such hacks, since may hacks have occurred after an employee opened an email. Companies can also use what's called two-factor authentication to have their employees log in to their computers. That means they have a key fob that generates a number that's constantly changing and they have to enter that number in addition to their username and password. In our next report, Britain's economy slowed more than previously thought in the first three months of 2017, as rising inflation boosted by last year's Brexit vote took a toll on household spending. Growth was revised down to 0.2% in the first quarter from three-tenths of 1% in the first estimate driven by a bigger than expected slowdown in, in consumer services according to figures from the office for national statistics we have more in the following report oil prices edged up on friday but market spot remained on the bag foot after tumbling in the previous session when obic and allied producers extended output cuts but disappointed investors bidding on longer or larger curbs at Thursday's meeting in Vienna, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries OPEC and some non-OPEC producers agreed to extend pledge to cut around 1.8 million barrels per day until the end of the first quarter of 2018. The initial agreement would have expired in June this year. Crude oil pranked 5% following the announcement on the engine up a touch on Friday. Gaining back some of these losses, Brent crude futures were at 51.83 US dollar per barrel, up 0.37 cents or 0.7 percent from their last close. US West Texas intermediate crude futures were below 50 US dollar at 49.15, though still up 16. Despite these gains, analysts said the markets were on the back foot. Alois Hettel, vice president at energy consultancy Wood Markin, said that the decision in Vienna sends a signal of continued support for oil prices from OPEC, which helps U.S. onshore drills make plans to further increase their production. U.S. oil production has already risen by 10% since mid-2016 to over 9.3 million barrels per day, close to the output of top producers Russia and Saudi Arabia. Goldman Sachs warned that the biggest risk at oil markets was what would happen next year at the end of the OPEC-led production cut. With the U.S. output rising steadily and OPEC and its allies potentially ramping up production in 2018 to regain lost market share, many traders already expect another price slump. Welcome back to the program with our special guest this evening, Mr. Abdul Wahab al Badr, the Director General of the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development. Uh, Mr. Al Badr, what is the economic impact the fund brings to the countries which uh, the fund operates in? Obviously, you hear back uh, from nations who 
benefit uh, from the Kuwait fund? Well, the benefit is to say that the Kuwait fund has an economic impact over a specific country. It will be very difficult to do so, uh, very, but it is, uh, I think, working with others, uh, working with the international community, working with, the, with other aid organizations as a whole, of course, bring uh, a support to that uh, uh, uplift to the economic uh, development of a country. Uh, and Kuwait Fund has been doing that over a number of years, co 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 cooperating with others uh, and working with the international community. Kuwait Fund is, is a main, uh, of course, uh, uh, attendant and worker within uh, what, uh, the HIBIC initiative as a whole. Uh, this initiative is, is uh, uh, is uh, aimed to s lift a lot of uh, debt burden with uh, countries uh, that face uh, a very uh, real economic uh, s uh, downfalls and, 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 and try to work with the international community to find a way and means to, 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 uh, to come out of it. Uh, Kuwait Fund uh, helped and uh, provided uh, some of the assistance. It is, uh, it's called HIBIC. It's an abbreviation for Highly Indebted Poor Countries Initiative, uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a abbreviation. And this initiative, Kuwait Fund, is, is a big participant. So maybe, uh, as an individual, uh, it's very hard to say that uh, uh, we, we did uh, change the economic uh, preview of a country, but as with other groups and with working with other international community and of course and other countries and other funds we have done that. Uh, if I may uh, also mention that you, uh, the Kuwait Fund not only offers the loan but they also offer technical assistance yes. uh, 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 as well as you send a team, correct? Yes, well uh, of course the team is part of the work so mm -hmm. uh, any project is is not financed just directly without doing looking at the project mm -hmm. itself. We go and, and embrace that project, embrace the, 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 the all the studies that are available. If needed, we we add to those studies and uh, and then provide uh, come up with our own study that we submit to our board of directors. So we follow that, and not only follow before, or even after signing that loan, we follow from A to Z until the end of the project, until we are satisfied uh, of that that project has finished. Uh, we will be back shortly with our guests to continue our discussion on the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development after this short break. Stay tuned. In our last report this evening, the World Economic Forum concluded in the Kingdom of Jordan with a panel discussion on the importance of new technologies for the region's younger generations. Stay tuned for the full report. Higher prices due to the weakness of the pound since the EU referendum led to slower UK economic growth than initially expected in the first three months of the year and highlighted how British shoppers are seeing their spending power fall. Growth was revised down to 0.2% in the first quarter from 0.3% in the first estimate driven by slowdown in consumer services. The economy grew 0.7% during the final three months of 2016. The Office for National Statistics said that distribution, hotels and restaurants sector and retailers slowed growth in the first quarter of this year and this was partly because of higher prices. As employment continued to grow in the first three months of the year, 122,000 jobs were added. The new estimate of economic growth suggests that productivity fell more than the initial estimate of a 0.5% decline in output per hour published last week. 
George Buckley, UK economist at Numora, said while UK income is probably the same as that of Germany relative to where it was at the start of 2008, Germany has produced its 8.5% increase in aggregate output over the period with no change in its population compared with a 6% rise in UK headcount. The latest purchasing managers index from market found the services sector grew at its fastest pace this year in April. Welcome back with our special guest this evening, the Director General of KPAID, Mr. Al Badr. The, new, the fund started a new approach in the year 2002 to support development inside the state of Kuwait through the financing of national programs with strategic significance. What is the role of the fund with regards to the helping Kuwait youth become productive in the economic domain? Well, uh, Kuwait Fund thought that in 2002, and of course the idea came up in 2002, we have worked, made some studies, and, and we come and we started with it in 2004. But the idea was Kuwait Fund has gained a lot of experience, uh, especially in the engineering sector, in terms of dealing with consultants, contractors, uh, uh, knowing them, uh, and of course, they trust us and, and our work also. Uh, we have good reputation and they have good, the ones that have good reputation with us. We thought that we can introduce uh, an engineering program whereby we can uh, uh, train fresh engineers, uh, newly graduated engineers, uh, of course, with a specific uh, capabilities. Uh, when I say specific capabilities, uh, he, he uh, we need uh, a lot of uh, uh, percentage of grade capabilities, a percentage of perception, uh, percentage of capability to deal with others because uh, we need to produce a group uh, that are in sync to work together in a program. Uh, that what fields do you look for, especially? Uh, so all open, in, all all engineers, all engineers, all, all engineers, all, all engineers. Engineer, formal engineer. engineers. We have opened it, opened it wide. As a matter okay. of fact, we got nuclear, we got medical uh, engineers, we got. In, uh, so we try to help them, and of course, it's a program that consists of uh, three stages. The first stage was is to to train them for three months here in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the Kuwait Fund offices, uh, of course, we have a, a specific uh, department to do that. Uh, we provide them to give them, prepare them to work, to prepare them to in the private sector, because our aim is to prepare them to work in the private sector. Uh, sector, uh, uh, and also uh, teach them about uh, private sector requirements and other. Then we train them six. We take uh, outside six six months. Uh, we employ them uh, in, 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 uh, in, in co uh, with contractors and consultants around the world, uh, those countries that, uh, and of course, uh, co contractors and consultants provide us with some seats in their, in their offices. Uh, this trainee, training will take six months. At the last uh, three, uh, three months also is a training here in Kuwait at Kuwaiti's, Kuwaiti companies. Uh, this is a, a total uh, of, well, 13 months uh, uh, program that it but includes within uh, about one month off because between a program and a program there is a, uh, a two week uh, uh, of uh, a resting, a resting time the team. So it's, it's a 13 month program. Kuwait fund uh, full pay, uh, full pay uh, for this program. Uh, and of course, it is uh, the idea came to us to consist with other ideas that came up, especially with uh, the public authority, uh, inv uh, with uh, investment Kuwait Authority. Investment authority. Mm -hmm. Kuwait Investment Authority was have started, of course, the economic the financing, the financial uh, training for the financial uh, the students and, uh, and graduates, uh, and we came to support that uh, in engineering. 
And lately, of course, uh, PIFS, which is the Kuwait uh, uh, also authority, have, have uh, done their own uh, law program, uh, law training mm -hmm. program. So I think three, three authorities here in Kuwait have that different fields. Uh, and they work mm -hmm. in different fields, which support really uh, training of Kuwaitis and Kuwaiti, Kuwaiti graduates. Of course, it's not the only thing that we do at the Kuwait Fund. Of course, within our mandate, um, and this is by law, we, we provide uh, up to 25% of our uh, net income every year to, uh, uh, to a public housing authority. Mm -hmm. uh, up to now, we have already transferred 300, uh, 300 million uh, Kuwaiti dinar uh, wow. from our own resources. Those are part of our profits over the past 12 years. Uh, 12 years, and now there is some amounts also really that will be transferred after the approval of our uh, two, uh, two of the uh, years that have not been approved uh, up to now by, by, by the parliament. So we are to trying to help beside our uh, uh, work in uh, outside. We try to work within, especially on those two fields, and uh, try to support uh, 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 Kuwait. Uh, for the Kuwait youngsters out there who are uh, going to school and about to graduate and looking forward to working with the Kuwait Fund, are you looking for bachelors, masters, or doctors, uh, or uh, company? Any no, no, fresh graduates. Fresh graduates. They have bachelors to be fresh graduates. <laughs> so we are bachelors. So within the first two years of their graduation maximum, other they exceed that, I will not accept. We are very firm mm -hmm. in terms of uh, selection. Because uh, you're going to be educating them more. You have a thirteen Well, we, we, we have to. They have to be on the same age because they work together. They work as a group Understood. together the first three months, and we think we cannot. We cannot leave it wide open in terms of uh, selecting. So first, fresh graduates, yeah, two years. Actually. Understood. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Al-Badr, before we conclude our discussion on the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development, let us talk about the future vision of the fund and uh, how you see the role of the fund uh, taking place in the future. I, I'm very optimistic on, on Kuwait and the fund and the work of Kuwait. I think our uh, forefathers when the institution was established was established with an idea and I think uh, the idea of helping others is a good idea but the idea that a continuation of that uh, assistant is the great and the nucleus of any uh, work of that uh, of it because uh, it's always good to have a good idea but it's only be a good idea if you can manage to make it work consistently, without stopping, without uh, getting affected by, uh, by the economic situation mm -hmm. in a country or in the world or anything. Kuwait Fund has been doing so. I mm -hmm. think over the years, we have continued working even in the biggest uh, times during in, uh, our invasion, the invasion of Kuwait, Kuwait Fund was working, uh, never stopping, continued, continu continuing, simply because we have managed to uh, over the years, uh, build up our resources, build up our capital. Uh, you know, Kuwait Fund uh, is capitalized. It's uh, our current uh, capital, uh, authorized capital is 2 billion Kuwaiti dinar. Nevertheless, our resources, current resources is 5.2 billion Kuwaiti mm -hmm. dinar, which is well. And that's all, all, was, all, all was built through, through uh, our operation in terms, besides, of course, uh, good management of the of the loan itself, like and also good management of the liquid uh, cash that we have through the international market. Uh, by doing so, we ha we were successful in in, in, in making and in, 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 in utilize good utilization of the our resources. Kuwait, uh, although the ca our our uh, capital was uh, uh, decided to be two thousand. Uh, in 81, well, it was much less than that, 1,000 in the, in the early 70s and the rest. But payment of that was never reached the 2,000. As a matter of fact, the government through the years up to 1985 have paid up to the capital of Kuwait Fund around 970 uh, million uh, Kuwaiti dinar. Uh, Kuwait, uh, but then 
because of the economic situation of well, and, and the prices of oil then, uh, we decided to transfer some of our uh, the reserve into the, the capital and not only, and of course uh, the mandate was changed that our capital will be fulfilled through our own income by taking 50% to, to, to our capital while 50 goes to our reserve. Alhamdulillah, we managed to do that in 99 and right now uh, the, 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 the amount is, uh, of our capital is fully paid, of course, and our reserve is, is, is more than that. So I think my vision is to continue that work. My vision is this, the, the work and the vision of the institution is, is a great vision. It's, it's a vision of work, working with others, uh, developing other countries, working with people and, and uh, to find a way that um, uh, let you uh, continue doing so and not affected by any economic hiccups uh, to your right or left or a year after a year, uh, a year uh, and after a year and that's ha normally happens in the market uh, this is something that I'm, I'm looking forward to and I'm hoping that uh, we continue with Mr. Badr uh, uh, a final observation please uh, uh, let me know if this is correct or not the Kuwait fund is helping Kuwait expand friendship abroad expand its friend uh, friendship base abroad I think Kuwait has been worked, but worked in all fields, uh, in Kuwait policy or in all fields, trying to help that. Uh, not only mm -hmm. in terms of the Kuwait for Kuwait, but also like politics, for example. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, be moderate in, in, in its uh, operation, moderate in their uh, work, work with others. And of course, Kuwait Fund is, is a great part of it, uh, a great part of it. And that's very well visible. Uh, uh, everywhere. Mr. Badr, thank you very much for your time. Sure. This brings us to the end of this episode of the World Economic Review. A word of gratitude and appreciation goes out to our special guest this evening, Mr. Abdul Wahab Al Badr, the Director General of the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development. We hope to see you again next week with the next edition of the World Economic Review. Have a good night. <laughs>